Good afternoon, ladies and everyone. gentlemen. Please take your seats. Good afternoon. Nice to see everyone. I'm going to call the Finance Committee to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Sure. Councilmember Gruber? Here. Councilmember Patterson? Here. Councilmember Smith? Here. Councilmember, oh, Vice President Lupian? Here. President Melendez? Here. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start with introductory number 323, authorizing an agreement with CypherWorks Incorporated for online employee training. Any questions, comments, or concerns? It's been moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Introductory number 324, authorizing an agreement providing city internships to SUNY Brockport students. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Comment. Please. Well done to the administration. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Not I'll take a motion. It's been moved. Second. And second. And all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Introductory number 325, authorizing an agreement relating to the Racial and Structural Equity Race Commission's recommendations. Um, I want to start out with a couple of, of questions. First of all, a comment, thank you. Uh, I think this is well, uh, it's a long time coming, I should say. Uh, I know the, the report, when did that report come out? M March 2021? So uh, it feels like it's been a long time since, uh, since we've been talking about how to best move forward on the recommendations and uh, certainly happy to see Dr. Hawkins and the Urban League get involved here. I have a couple of questions. First, uh, I already asked about county dollars and in the responses we got back, heard there was some effort towards the county supporting this. Do you have an update on kind of, is it gonna be an equal split? Uh, so far, anything we've done with the county has been an equal split. Uh, we are still um, working on finalizing that with the, with the county. Okay. But you expect that to come shortly. We're oh, not, yeah. not going to yeah. be left oh, hanging yeah. out here. No. Oh, no, 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 no. No, come on now. Okay. So here's the bigger question, though. The, the one that I'm, I'm not really sure what, how, well, I'll be curious to hear what the answer is. Cedar Grove. So uh, I asked in the questions what their role is in all of this, and I got some answers. And uh, frankly, it's hard to see what the real merit of that contract is. And I understand it happened in the previous administration, but that's a pretty sizable amount of money for what doesn't feel like a whole ton of work. So can you maybe, maybe I just, I'm reading it wrong. Can you provide some clarity as to what role they're gonna play in this? Yeah, I think, no, I think it is different because remember you're gonna have to have a success for, successor organization for RAISE and that's not gonna be Cedar Grove. So Urban League needs to be able to start being prepared to be that successor organization. Um, that is where RAISE is going to be housed um, to be able to move on a lot of the recommendations that go outside of government. So I think that that's what the difference is. I think that uh, Cedar Grove will be a technical advisor, provide technical support to Urban League um, as they um, get ready to ramp up to take on the full scope of the raise um, process, whatever, whatever it is you want to call it. Because the, the idea is that at the end of the day, raise will live at, um, at the Urban League and no longer be a, 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 a um, function of the county and the city doing it from, from, the, from a government standpoint. We want raise to um, outlive hopefully all of us, but it needs a place. And, and, that's, and so that's why it's, 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 this, is, this is different. Well, again, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to certainly be voting yes on this. I'm not that pleased with what we're getting out of Cedar Grove and what we've already committed to them financially. And I guess my, my question maybe more pointedly is, is this something that you want to, do you want to go forward with the Cedar Grove contract or do you want to look at other opportunities. Well, well we've all, the Cedar Grove contract has already been has already gone forward, and as you know, we have an obligation to honor contracts. And I'll just leave it at that. Okay, but you expect their role to not be extended beyond what we've already no. contracted no. with them. No, I think their, con their, their contract is for with, with the time frame that their contract. That their contract they're going to give us best practices nationally. There is limitation and objectives on both of these because they're uh, national in scope. Got it. My final question before I pass it off to others, and Councilmember Lightfoot, I don't mean to speak um, for you here, but I'm going to attempt to for a second as the person who joined me on the Race Commission. We as commissioners have not been engaged in this work in a year and a half. Um, I've talked to some of the co-chairs who were very heavily involved. They had not been formally engaged. Now that we have, assuming this contract passes and moves forward and we have the Urban League ready to take the mantle, will there be an opportunity to get all the commissioners, the co-chairs, 
back in a room yeah. with the Urban League, with Cedar Grove, probably on Zoom, and understand kind of how we're moving forward together? Yes, absolutely. That's the, that's, that's the, um, that's the goal. That's the process. That's the, being part. And, okay. and I think that that's being planned in the works. The, bo the bottom line is, is that for, for something like a raise in order to be successful, we don't want it to be like the Crimi report or any of the other reports and stuff that have been put out. Um, obviously, the city, we have our role to play. The county has their role to play. But there are so many other things in terms of recommendations that are in that report that needs to be carried out. Um, including conversations about our successor, successor organizations and all those other things, it has to have a place. And that's what this um, piece of, um, th that's what this represents, this, what that, that this will do. Okay. I, I just, just want to say that the part of the Race Commission report that I worked on was around human social services, which obviously is a county function, not a city function. And the amount of, of bite size doable activities that that we that the community organizations that came together that we put in the report that have sat dormant for a year and a half i think is is well i'll just use the word it's frustrating we could have done a lot more it doesn't seem that there has been anyone to your point mayor to really kind of be the quarterback so i'm looking forward to the urban league doing this but i think we really need to make sure that the county in particular is ready to to play ball in a lot of this work Anyone else, uh, Councilmember Life, anything you want to add about this one? Um, no, I, I just want just just yes, um, real quickly. I uh, just want to to reiterate the fact that um, the Race Commission, uh, living in Urban League, um, also in, in engaging with the commissioners. But there was supposed to be kind of like an op-ed group uh, established from the 21 commissions to a smaller commissioner group, whatever the, the name was not ever determined. But I just want to ask you to, to the administration, is that also uh, part of the work that the Urban League is going to help to facilitate to have that kind of uh, accountability group, if you will, uh, made up of some of the 21 commissioners as well? Exactly. And, 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 and the, the term is, and that doesn't mean it's going to be called this, but kind of like an implementation type council mm -hmm. um, as, or a successor organization to raise what something like that would look like. Thank you. Any other council members, questions, comments, concerns? If not, I'll take a motion. It's been moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Introductory number 326, authorizing an amendatory agreement for conflict council services. Move any, it. It's been moved. Any, are there any questions, comments, or concerns? If not, I'll take a second. Second. It's been seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Introductory number 327, authorizing an amendatory agreement for expert witness services for the law department. Questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Introductory number 328, amending ordinance number 2022-172 relating, relating to the Peacemaker Fellowship Program. Questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. It's been moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Introduction number 348, a resolution authorizing the waiver of civil service examination fees. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Comment. Please. Outstanding work. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Councilmember Patterson. And I'll add, this is a raised recommendation. Sure is. Very, very grateful about this. Any, any other comments from anyone? Okay. It's, Mike, you moved. Uh, Councilmember Patterson, you moved it? Yep. Can I get a second? Second. It's been seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Introduction number 351, appropriation from the insurance reserve fund. Any questions, comments, or concerns? If not, I'll take a motion. Move it. It's been moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Introduction number 353, establishing an opioid compensation fund. Comment. Please. Again, commend the administration for this work. There's a great need for this, and it's nice to know that we're going to put it in a lockbox. Yes, thank you. As, as many of you know, some of you may not be familiar with this, but we um, got uh, settlement funds from New York State, and um, we have to set up a, a separate fund to put the funds, the, the um, opioid funds in. I'm sure everybody knows what's going on with opioids, so um, we look forward to um, having uh, conversations in the future about how we decide to um, spend these funds. Additional comment. So also want to commend the administration on this. Um, I know we've had many meetings on how to 
um, address this challenge in the community. And I'm looking forward to being innovative with these resources and coming up with strategies that come back to council for consideration. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question about how, I'm not sure if this is more of a question for the state or the AG, but how is it determined what municipalities or, or bodies get what amount of money? Um, they didn't tell us how we how, how, how it was determined. Um, obviously the county gets more than, than we do, um, but we were just told, hey, this is how much you're getting and, and what you're gonna get. Is that right, Linda? Yes, to the extent that you had to engage in the litigation. Which, which we, we did. To, once we chose to engage in the litigation, the uh, court through the AG made a determination. I think counties get slightly more significantly more than cities because human services is their bailiwick to the greater extent but there's the recognition that it impacts cities so that's why we get and is there there's a formula bigger counties get more smaller counties get less yes it's definitely got it i could get a i could get a breakdown it, it is based on the size okay mm -hmm. and i think and i think we'll be getting this money over um how long of a time period? I think over several years. Over several years. So this will be something that we, we can continue to kind of um, address for sure. But uh, I never thought that uh, we, I would be having so many conversations and the president mentioned about opioids as we've had probably in the last couple of months. It's a major problem in our community. Anything else on 353? Yes. Uh, what is the community input mechanism you'll be using to ensure that directly impacted people have it say. Yeah, great question. I think to be determined, but we definitely are going to uh, are definitely going to use a community impact uh, mechanism, definitely, um, because it gives us the opportunity to really do some innovative things. Um, that's why we kind of want to take this money and put it in the lockbox. So we probably won't be spending this money anytime soon until we, you know, have lots of conversation with folks. In fact, we talked to some providers today. Um, I mean, it's, you know, this is a complex problem, so we want to make sure that we. Um, get our bang for our buck using this. And then also, how can we collaborate with the county who may be getting more money? Um, we know it's a, it's a county problem as well, but a lot of the stuff that we actually see happens in the city. So how can we also um, work with them? So we, so we look forward to having those conversations as well. And we'll also include council in those conversations. Mm -hmm. And just a, a, a statement. Um, so I have a very serious self-interest in how we proceed in this area. And I just wanna make sure that we are as innovative as possible and truly look to invest in harm reduction, evidence-based services. So great work and I'm glad that we're moving forward with this. Okay, I'll take a motion on 353. Move it. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. any opposed? Motion passes. Introductory number 355, establishing death benefits for beneficiaries of certain police officers and firefighters. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. Question. Please. Does this not include suicide? It, it's death in the line of duty. Thank you. What, when was this passed at the state level? It actually has existed for a while, but was not brought to our attention this or prior administration's attention, it was brought to our attention after Officer Mazurkowitz's death and a decision was made to bring this forth to council to provide this added benefit to his family. And just for clarity, this is something that's been on the books in, for New York, with New York State for a while and, and municipalities have to opt in or out. Yes, yes, municipalities have to opt in if they wish and it is only for police and fire. Okay. Any further questions, Councilmember Patterson? Will we also be able to compensate Officer Pearson's family? Um, I do not expect so because as it is, there, there are certain time constraints okay. within which the, the family has to apply. And even in this case, there's gonna be need for an application to a Supreme Court justice for a late filing. It's supposed to be done within 30 days of the death. so. I likely that's not going to happen. Any additional questions? If not, I'll take a motion on 355. Move it. It's been moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. And finally, introductory number 356, amending the 2021-22 budget for year and budget amendments. This is a, uh, a very uh, full 
piece of legislation, so I'd like to just ask a couple of questions myself to try to unpack it a little bit, and um, then I'll open up to council members afterwards. So there's two, there's two distinct pieces to this legislation. The first is a transfer of dollars from contingency and then a transfer of appropriations from various departments. Let's start off with the first piece about contingency and ask whether it's the mayor's office or the or budget office to just explain um, where this dollar amount comes from and why the allocations are being made to the two departments it's being made to. Mr. Uh, budget Director. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so the $8.3 million that's transferred from contingency, that's done as part of closing out the 21-22 fiscal year, and that represents the amount provided for in that fiscal year's budget uh, to account for expired labor agreements. So uh, as of 21-22, uh, uh, three years that uh, the police uh, bargaining uh, agreement is past expiration uh, and one for fire. And those amounts uh, provide for anticipated costs once uh, those agreements are settled. And the transfers to police and fire allow uh, the payroll accruals recorded as part of the year-end closing to be uh, fully funded. So in, in the case of the Locust Club contract, which has been expired, well, which has not been current for four years now, this 6.3 uh, reflects multiple years of buildup of contingency. Yes, council members. So uh, as of 21-22, three years, when we, when we last talked about the 22-23 budget, we had some questions on contingency, and that would have addressed the fourth year because uh, this year that we're in is that fourth year uh, of expiration. And this breakdown, the 6.3 versus the 2.0, is, you, you use the word anticipated, these are, these are projections. We won't know until an agreement is formally signed between the administration and the bargaining unit. That's, that's correct. These are estimates, and in fact, our rating agencies uh, you know, look to when they're evaluating uh, the city's finances that we have, uh, one, disclosed uh, any expired labor agreements, and two, that we have made uh, appropriate provision for those uh, in, in our fiscal year budget. So this is the first time that I'm seeing, and I expect that's probably true of most council members, um, that there has was a file for arbitration on July 15th, 2022. So I'm assuming that there's only so much that um, you can say, being that it's gone to arbitration. But if Mayor, Mr. Mayor, if you can give some uh, idea of what that timeline looks like and what that process looks like, I'm sure we'd all appreciate it. Timeline? Um, yeah, I, I can tell you I have no idea. We have no idea about arbitration, no idea. It extends it, takes time, um, but I will say that you always keep talking. So, but what it means functionally is that there was an impasse between, at the bargaining table, there was an impasse and there was a deci decision to file for arbitration. Basically, yeah. And now it's essentially out of your hands or the Locust Club's hands and in the hands of an well, that's what our, our arbitrator, our, that's, what, that's what arbitration is. Arbitration is when a third party comes in to mediate the two sides to see if you can come to an agreement. And the, arbit the, the arbitrator is assigned by the state? The arbitrator is usually the state of 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 the yeah, I don't really want to go into details on contract. Negotiation. Okay, well, let me let me ask this last question then, because it is it is uh, pertinent to the to the piece here. Uh, there there is still a chance that this does not get resolved this year. Like that's how little we know about timeline at this point. So in theory, we're. Pat I'll say that I like to settle contracts, so I I, I don't want to I don't I don't want to say that. I, I my hope is is that every single bargaining we just studied settled the ASPE contract. My goal is to work. To settle every contract on on time. Now, this is my first year um, with contracts. That's our goal. Um, could that not happen? Maybe not. But I, I don't want to say that. I, I don't want to definitively say that it's not. I'm, I'm I'm positive, and it is my hope that we can um, find a, a good agreement around the contract. Okay. I want to I want to ask some questions on number two, but I first want to open it up to anyone who has questions specifically about the transfer of eight point three eight zero six zero zero from contingency to those departments. Any questions? 
Yeah, it sounds like the situation with the police department differs from the situation with the fire department, right? Um, we have not go gone to um, uh, arbitration with the fire department. Correct. Yes. So in that case, is it possible to separate the amounts? Like right now, it just feels really dense. Is it possible to separate to have uh, an allocation for police and an allocation for fire? Can, can I ask that question in a slightly different way too? Yeah. Is it possible to maintain dollars in contingency? Uh, so we need to mechanically uh, relieve contingency as each year end is closed. Uh, when we get to 22, 23, uh, if we were in the exact same position as we are now, we would go through that same mechanical exercise. Certainly, if uh, one or both contracts are settled before the end of this fiscal year, uh, there would be a budget amendment uh, resembling uh, these same mechanics to occur sooner. So the bottom line is this 8.38 has to move from contingency to somewhere. Yeah. And this is what is being proposed. Councilmember Martin, does that answer your question? Yeah, just separating the two things. Like there's one amount being uh, put in contingency for police and for fire. They're two different departments. And in, my, in me trying to understand the different circumstances between police and fire, it would help if they were separated. So I think the action, uh, and it's always um, dangerous when I start to talk about uh, the legalities, but I will. Uh, I think the, the action as it's outlined in the transmittal tracks to the particular budget line item that's referenced. Right. And then the breakdown is simply provided for uh, illustrative right. purposes. It's, right. it's eight million. Right. That's yeah. the number. It's, that's it's, the number. It, we, just, we just broke it out, Councilman right. Martin, just to show you what they were for each line, but it, but the actual line is is the the total amount of the of the eight million. So really, in that line, it's not really separate. We we to show you what, what it is, we do that, but it's actually just one number. Which is the same thing we'll see in number Which two the with the with the, the, the transfer. Same thing you'll see That's in seven point four. Right. Yep. It's all and, and and I always tell people, really, it's everything is all one pot. We just kind of break it out. I mean, you know what the city's budget is. We just yeah break it and put it in different lines because that's the way to do it. But it's it's all coming from the same source. Any further questions on the contingency transfer? Okay, I'd like to ask some questions about number two. So, um, so this this piece of legislation is at, is taking it's transferring appropriations of seven point four million dollars from departments that underspent. Is that correct? That's correct, Council that, Member. That underspent and moving those dollars to a specific list of projects, which is on the second page. So can I first ask why the underspend? Uh, so I would say that the underspending has happened uh, largely, uh, certainly uh, you know, all departments have uh, effectively managed their budgets, uh, but the underspending is uh, largely due to uh, vacancy savings uh, and the associated fringe benefit savings uh, offset in part due to uh, inflationary pressures in the areas of fuel utilities and supplies okay I mean this is a comment not a question but certainly I mean the the one through nine here for all the council members who are looking at the transmittal this is what we're moving dollars over we're being asked to move dollars over to all of these projects look they look great I'm sure everyone has some questions about them but certainly um, the underspend to me suggests that we could have more people cleaning parks, more people at libraries in, un, in understaffed or, or unstaffed positions. And so I'm, I'm assuming that this 7.4 million is not ideal and that we'll hopefully see this number go down next year in terms of an underspend. Is that right? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll see it go down, but I, but I don't necessarily agree um, with the premise that um, that you could easily spin this on, on headcount because, I mean, we do a pretty um, thorough analysis during the budget process on making sure that departments have what they need. Um, and I think you saw that this year. I mean, it was very few layoffs, very few. So, and, and that's, and in fact, we increased um, headcount. So I, I wouldn't say that, that those dollars could have been spent for that. 
I think we're lucky in this sense in that we're able to spend it on some things that um, have been priorities that we haven't been able to. So that number may not be the same next year, so we need to take advantage of it while we, um, while we can. But you are right. It's not, it's not something that we can bank on um, every year. So speaking of which, can, can you give a sense of why these nine projects? I'm sure there's a, a million places you could have put this 7.4 million. Why are you proposing these nine projects? I think these are um, the ones that we went back to departments. We go back to the departments and say, hey, um, you did a good job managing your budgets. What are some of the priorities in your departments that rise to the top? And then they bring them to me for approval, and I, and I, and I sign off on them. But I, I trust the wisdom of the staff of these uh, brilliant people that I hire to make um, recommendations on things that they've heard from council through the budget process and within the departments to make sure that we're um, reaching those things. Obviously, obviously, one I gave a nudge on, which is our um, environmental justice area. As you know, the trees issue is um, disparities in trees, and as we work for environmental justice in the city, um, obviously, I might have I might have pushed our DES buddies to, <laughs> to, to to do that. But this gives us the opportunity to make sure that um, we're keeping in with the priorities that the departments had already um, laid out. Not really anything new, but things that they may, we may have wanted to do during the budget process that we couldn't do. Yeah, I mean, I, I for one would say that the, the tree expansion beautification program is exciting. I know a lot of council members are very eager to see the website redesigned, so it's great to see some <laughs> dollars for, their, for that in there. I, I would just add, this is a significant amount of money, and I think that when we do the budget approval process, we get a certain amount of detail, and there are some elements here where I would like some more detail. I would like as much detail as possible prior to the full council vote on on Tuesday. Specifically, number six, the six twenty-five thousand in funding for enhancements at parks, fields, and playgrounds. I'd love to know. I don't, Commissioner Green. I don't know if you have some ideas now, or if you want to just submit some things in writing for where you anticipate those dollars going to. Similarly, uh, general rehab needs at city facilities. It'd be good to get a little bit more detail on that. I'm not asking for for line items on everything, but just a sense as though we were going through the budget process. It'd be nice to hear what we're spending money on specifically. Is that is that doable before yeah, we, Tuesday? We, we can get you um, a little bit. Yeah, we can get we can flesh it out on what some of those items might be. Okay. Do any other council members have questions on um, the transfer of the seven point four million? Where it's coming from? Where it's going? This, I do have a question. Go ahead. This may have been covered, um, so I apologize if it's a duplicate, but is there a reason that we're transferring it now and not after we um, know what the arbiter arbitration number is? Oh, so you're going back up to the top, you're going back up to the first part. Um, well, we have to do it as part of our year in account. That's why, that's the only okay. reason why. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, this, is, this is strictly a, a function of account. Yeah, we. Uh, what I think I heard Director Burns say is we functionally cannot keep money in contingency, so it has to go somewhere, and I'm sure that has to happen prior to our audit. Correct. Right. Any additional questions from council members? It's been moved. Second. And seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. That concludes the Finance Committee's work. Thanks, everyone. Good afternoon, all. At this time, I call the Neighborhood and Business Development Committee to order and I ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilmember Patterson? Here. Councilmember Harris? Here. Councilmember Smith? Here. Vice President Lupian? Here. President Melendez? Here. Thank you. All right, introductory number 322. So I will be holding this in committee. It is my hope that we can get this out in the community, have a little conversation about it overall. I don't see any major problems or issues. I'm hoping that we can have some debate among us as council members here. It is a rather dense piece of legislation. There's a lot going on in there, but it is overall consistent with all the presentations that we've received from the administration. Questions, comments, or concerns? You said 322? 322. Council Member Gruber. Yeah, I, I just want to, um, I've said this before, I'll say it again, I want to thank the administration for developing the Cannabis Preparation Committee. I think that um, having a cross-departmental group as well as some community members to talk about this has been very helpful. I, I think probably like Councilmember Patterson, there are some things in here that I, I maybe wish were a little bit different, but I think at the end of the day it was as close to consensus of the group that we served on as possible, Commissioner pa or Councilmember Patterson. So 
Um, I'm certainly prepared to, to move forward with it, but understand that some folks want to still ask some questions. Thanks. Any other questions, comments, or concerns at this time? Move to that. Member, please. Yeah, I appreciate you holding and asking for community input. Thank you. You're welcome. That's all the piece you'll see up here between us two today. Um, questions, comments, any other questions, <laughs> comments, or concerns? All right, seeing none, we're going to hold this item. And so we're, and let me also say this um, there is some risk that the state could award licenses before we pass this item. It's my hope to pass this item in October. The administration has made me aware of that. I am aware of it. Um, I'm the chair. I've decided to hold it. If there's an impact, it's on me. So I just wanted to say that. So introductory number 329, sale of real estate. Questions, comments, or concerns? Hi. Please. Just real quick, um, I'm looking at the Orange Street location. The person that's purchasing it already has a, a pretty sizable lot. Do we ask? Do we do we ask the neighbor if they want to purchase it before we offer it to that, or is it first come first serve? What is the actual process? Commissioner Miller. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, normally, what we would do is, if a person requests it, we would offer it for sale to them. If the lot is of appropriate size, we would generally approach the uh, neighbor and ask if they'd like to split it, but in this case, uh, the neighbor wanted the lot, so we would sell it to them. Okay, so if it's a certain size, then we'll go to the neighbor and say, hey, do you want to split the size of this? But if it's not, then we just, whoever correct. the first person is that comes to us? That's correct, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, I need a motion and a second. Move it. Second. Moved and seconded, and now we vote. All in favor of the introductory, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Introductory passes. Introductory number 330, authorizing a lease for space located at 1099 J Street. I want to commend the administration for answering the questions that we have. We understand that um, that, off, that space will be utilized by RPD. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Council Member Gruber. Thanks. Um, so uh, Chief Smith, I, I understood the, the, the answer that um, Presumably, 1099 doesn't have a whole lot to do with the workload analysis you were talking about. Um, that was one of the questions asked, and that was the response that came back. But it does talk about special units, and you did mention in your confirmation hearing a bunch that those are units that you really want to look at and assess. I just want to be really sure as to why we're asking for a three-year lease here, uh, and maybe the better way of getting at that is when do you plan on conducting this workload analysis had our first had our first meeting yesterday so you think that's something that'll be done in the next six months uh, well the goal is to have the uh, at least the patrol element of the department in a different format by spring because um, even with the new hires we know we're still going to be facing a deficit in patrol so that it that is the that is the immediate goal is by spring at least to have the patrol in, in a different configuration but you're confident that there will be a utility for this space where it's located the way it's the way it's 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 con all the context of this space for the next three years absolutely okay thanks any other questions comments or concerns yes council member thank you um uh, kind of related. Are we no longer discussing the substation? I, I, I'll just say that we're looking at that. I, I think we have to have a conversation um, with folks around the perception that if we have a building, that that somehow um, will improve public safety. Um, so what's more important than than looking at buildings right now is really this workload, this workload analysis and the way in which the department is going to be structured and the way in which we deploy um, officers. But um, everything is on the table, including conversations about sections, um, buildings where we put them and all that, um, including how many sections we have and how many sections we need. Um, but I think the, the, the larger conversation that, that, that I want to have is the way in which we deploy officers and how they are placed in areas where, where we have lots of need. I need to give you an example, Clinton section and Lake section. Okay, that's two areas where we have um, the most homicides, the most challenged, some of the most challenging neighborhoods. 
Um, so the chief is looking at um, all those things, and we're trying to trying to still have conversations about buildings, but not make buildings the central conversations um, as we talk about public safety. Councilmember Martin, what is the role of the special teams? Chief. So, uh, well, we have many. We have the special teams is the SWAT team, uh, the bomb squad, the scuba team hostage negotiation team. Um, the traffic unit is a specialized unit, although that's housed out of the uh, tactical unit at the moment. And all these units are housed, where are they all housed currently? Uh, a lot of them have no one particular office um, because again, they're part-time teams, so they're made up of members who have full-time assignments and then volunteer to do this team. They go to training and then they're available you know, when called in, then they, they go to the scene. Um, however, the SWAT team, for example, um, has been housed with a tactical unit on Child Street, which is a very limited number, uh, limited amount of space. Um, so we're looking to be able to move them over to J Street and accommodate them. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? I, I do have a question, one more, sorry, uh, would be for finance. So the money for this uh, expansion, would it come out of the current budget or is this an additional location, uh, allocation? So you have a question for finance or budget? Budget. 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 Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that question one more time? Uh, yeah, for the $2 million allocated for rent, uh, will that come out of the current budget or is this an additional allocation to the uh, amount already allocated to the RPD? Uh, I'm going to get back to you on that question just to be certain. Yes, thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns on this item? Seeing Move none, it. I need a motion and a second. Moved move. by President Melendez, seconded by. Second. Seconded by. All right. So we got a motion and a second. And now we vote. All in favor of the introductory, please say aye. 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 All opposed to the introductory, please say nay. Introductory passes. Introductory 331. Huh. Introductory 331. Appropriating emerging solution grant and coronavirus funds and authorizing an agreement for services to the homeless focused on Peace Village. Council Member Gruber. Thank you, Councilman Patterson. Um, I really want to thank the administration for pulling this together. I see uh, Nick Coulter from PCHO here. John, all the work you put into this, Carol. Thank you, everyone from the NBD team who, who, who worked on this. I want to just give a little bit of context, um, especially for uh, well, I'll just give context. 2018, was that right, Councilman Patterson? Um, we were asked uh, very quickly to probably my third or fourth council meeting, yours too, Mr. Mayor, uh, to run into the uh, council president's office and talk about the establishment of Peace Village at the time, um, in, in part because people were being moved off of the charter spectrum property. And there was a lot of hesitation to do it. Uh, there's a lot of hesitation about not just the why, but also the where and the for how long and and the who is gonna who's gonna kind of address some of the needs over there. And um, <clears throat> our our former colleague Elaine Spall served as the initial uh, chair, got them got the board uh, five or or nonprofit certification, some money, and started to establish Peace Village. And there was an attempt. Well, there was a thought, at least by the last administration, the narrative was that this is going to be a completely um, self-governing community with, with not a huge census and that it was going to last for as long as it needed to last, but probably not all that long. And who knows what may or may not have been true, but COVID hit. And I appreciate in the answers to the uh, Q&A that there was, an indicate, there was a, a reflection of how much homelessness change the way we the way that we understand homelessness and the way homelessness actually um, really manifested changed after March 2020 in the pandemic and by this time I was serving on the peace village I was serving as the peace village board chair councilmember Lupian was um, helping me in that space as well 
And it was just clear that we had to make a determination that either there was an investment in Peace Village to make it a safer space for people, or that Peace Village does not have a place in our community. And um, that was the conversation we had with all the different social service providers who work with the homelessness community in this, in, in, in this city. We had that conversation for, I don't know, Nick, year, a year plus. And um, ultimately, the, the ask was to the city and the county, and I want to be really clear here, this is not just a city uh, investment. The county is making substantial investments to Peace Village, which, for those of you who, may, who, who don't remember, when we established Peace Village, the county was adamantly not interested in supporting this work, adamantly refused to even be at the table. And now they're putting dollars and resources behind it and sharing with us a vision where we have an encampment that is merely one part of the continuum of homeless services and outreach that we conduct in this community. And I can't think of a better organization to do the work and to guide the work than person-centered housing options. And I think this is a really great step in the right direction. I appreciate the administration working on it. I'm sure there's a lot of question marks. And I would encourage any council member who has those questions to ask questions not just of the administration, but also to Nick as well. But I'm certainly supportive and appreciative of the mayor and the county executive and their teams for pushing this forward. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? I have a comment. Please go ahead, council member. Yeah, so being that homelessness is a, is a serious issue in this city as well as across the state, there needs to be a high level of accountability around this work. So for me, I want to see um, some future work sessions around deliverables to know exactly what is being done, how it is being done, and the impact that it is having on our community. It's a serious work and really need to be accountable. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, I need a motion and a second. Move it. Second. Moved and seconded, and now we vote. All in favor of the introductory, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Introductory passes. Introductory 332, resolution approving appointments to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, need a motion and a second. Move it. Somebody say second. Okay, moved and seconded. And now we vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Introductory passes. Introductory 333, resolution approving appointments to the City Planning Commission. Questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. Second. All right, and just a quick comment. Good to see Joan. Nice to see that you're uh, coming back. I don't know how they got you there, but I'm glad you're there. All right, and so now we vote. All in favor of the introductory, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Introductory passes. Introductory 334, resolution approving appointments to the Rochester Preservation Board. Questions, comments, or concerns? Seeing none, need a motion and a second. Move it. Second. Moved and seconded, and now we vote. All in favor of the introductory, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Introductory passes. Introductory 349, authorizing an application and grant agreement to restore New York Communities Initiative round six public hearing to be held at 5 p.m. after the September 15, 2022 committee's meeting. Just a quick comment. So y'all know I love affordable housing, right? Yeah, I love affordable housing. And it is really good to see that there's more affordable housing on deck coming online and some folks are even doing some good work down there in that 30% AMI, which is a hard place to get to. So I just want to commend the administration and everybody, all of the developers who are participating in this project. I get it, everything can't be affordable housing, but it's nice to see that we do have some affordable housing. Council Vice President. Um, so I, I agree with you. Um, I met with um, a representative from the CSD, it, which is the 45 to 51 mm -hmm. Chestnut. It sounds really impressive, both in how it plans to ut utilize partnerships in meeting the needs of its tenants and the affordable units it will develop. Um, I haven't met with the uh, developer of, um, I think it was 150 East Main, mm -hmm. but again, the units are predominantly 60% of AMI, which I support. 
And I acknowledge the remaining project sites are significantly distressed buildings. These are some of the worst ones in Rochester. And I really thank the MBD staff for going after this grant um, to help revitalize downtown. Um, however, I personally um, don't support subsidizing any market rate developments. And I'm hoping that in the, I, I have a question around if we submit this grant, is there any wiggle room after we get the money or ability to change the application to have you know at least 30 percent of the units for the remaining two developments that are uh, residential be um, at 60 percent or below um let me uh commissioner miller yes uh thank you council member lupian uh once we submit this uh, to the state and if we are successful in receiving uh, the Restore New York funding, it, it does have to be spent in uh, the way that we have requested. So the units that are affordable would remain affordable. The units that are not affordable uh, would remain market rate. Um, if we look across the units that we are uh, proposing here in this, about 47, almost 48 percent of the units will be affordable. They just won't all be in one building. So we are always focused on creating more affordable units and uh, 186 of the proposed 391 will be affordable uh, to and I tried to put all of the fluff up front to make sure that I acknowledge that Thank you. Um, is there a way to with the grant monies that we receive put a little pressure on these developments to include affordable units before we submit the application uh, what we did was uh, really work with these developers, and as you know, we, we're talking about existing buildings that are in varying states of, uh, of repair and will require major work to convert them into housing units. Um, some, for example, the former Cadillac Hotel, as, as you know, is in very, very um, significant state of disrepair. So. It is, it is a challenge to go back and really talk to these developers and say, uh, we understand that you've worked the numbers, we understand what you've come up with, but we need you to, to reduce these units. Um, what we're really looking for is making sure that there are as many affordable units as we, we can get, and at this 48% um, level, we, we believe that's sufficient. Our normal expectation is that 20% of the units would be affordable, and we're more than double that. I, um, oh, 20%, you're thinking about this as kind of like one project? Yes. Yeah. So, I, and you bring up the Cadillac, which um, is significantly distressed, yet that is one of the ones that is achieving some of the highest affordability. So I would challenge that the other, t uh, the, the St. Paul building, which is really the right next to the transit center, wondering why they weren't able to do the same. Um, and yes, and and that's a, I mean what we uh, what I would su suggest is that we've actually worked very closely with the developers and asked them to put their best proposal forward, and this is this is essentially what we have. So okay, I appreciate that. Yep. Um, and I I did have just um, a, yeah. a bit more comments to make because the reality is that um, this legislation is coming at a time when. Um, we're seeing the numbers of unhoused residents rising and shelters are being filled to capacity and even the rents that are at 60% of AMI, um, and again, it's very hard to get to 30%, um, aren't really affordable for our population. And when I was looking at the numbers, it kind of gave me sticker shock, thinking about, you know, my mortgage is for a four bedroom house is about 750, thinking about paying, you know, $900 for a studio. And it just got me digging into the numbers, so I bear with me, I just want to like put this out here that um, the area median income is $92,200 and according to the census data, the average Rochester household is 37000 which is about 41% of the AMI for the area. And HUD defines being cost burdened is anyone who pays more than 30% of their income for housing and may have difficulty affording necessities, necessities such as food, clothing, transportation, and medical care. Severe rent burden is defined as paying more than 50% of one's 
one's income and related costs, including insurance and utilities. So with the average household in Rochester earning 41% of AMI, the rent an average household would be able to afford and not be cost burdened would be about $935, which is about what the studio costs. Um, and so even with these developments at 60% of AMI, it's not meeting the needs of the average household. And the one bedrooms um, at 60% of AMI um, would put the average family over the 50% of severe cost burden. And so the, um, the average income for a family in Rochester is actually $20, $20. And we know how much inflation has impacted things. Actually, the data from the Department of Labor shows compute consumer prices rose 9.1% from a year ago. So all that to say, every time we build affordable housing at a higher rate than 41% of AMI, we're building it for not the average Rochester family. And LIHTC and the market rate housing is not going to do it because the numbers don't work. In addition to inflation, housing costs have, uh, uh, costs to build housing and remodel housing, wages, everything is going up. And so my challenge is we need to urgently and quickly meet the needs of our residents by building more affordable units in the deficit that we have in the 30 to 50 percent AMI range. And New York, other cities have done this in, in converting um, hotels and distressed commercial properties into affordable housing. And I know that in New York, we passed the Housing Our Neighbors with Dignity Act, the Honda Act. And I wanted to, you know, Kim, uh, Councilmember Smith knows the most about this. Are we in a position in Rochester to be able to utilize the funding and the legal structure of Honda? We are. And on the state level, we passed Honda and made Rochester notable by using the Cadillac as an example. But we know that moving forward, the Cadillac is not going to be an ideal project. And so to work with um, the NBD to identify a Honda project in Rochester would be great. I know it is uh, going to be one of our MAPI's priorities, uh, identifying that um, for a Honda project. So we look forward to those conversations. But just in sum, just I completely agree, we certainly need more affordable housing in the city of Rochester, but we have, must continuously ask ourselves the question, affordable for who? There was a lot of resources that went into the 2034 plan. And within that 2034 plan, it states that those who are suffering most from the housing crisis are those who are living at or below the poverty level. And so as we move forward, if we are going to meet our goal by 2034, we have to be bold and creative in what we are doing in our housing projects. So that means as we are having conversations with our developers, we have to inform them of the state of housing in Rochester and what exactly we are looking for. Because if we house people in these units knowing that they are inevitably not going to be affordable, all we are doing is feeding our eviction numbers. And it is a vicious cycle that we certainly need to get out of. So in sum, I agree, we need more affordable housing units, but we always need to ask ourselves, affordable for who? Equity, and that was a part of the mayor's, that was a part of your plan and what you wanted to see in all of our policies moving forward. Equity is extremely important. Any other questions, comments, concerns on this introductory? Yes. Uh, not to jump into the next one, but this one shows that we are applying ourselves while the next uh, legislation, 350, shows we are simply endorsing it. So what's the difference between why we're applying for this one as opposed to just endorsing it? There are, there are actually two different applications, Councilmember Pio. The city is applying. The city has the ability to apply for Restore 6 funding, and that's the one we're applying for. The county also has the ability to reply, apply for funding, and we're endorsing their application because it is a project that's located in the city, Thank in your district, the Tent City Building. Oh, yes. We'll get to that. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, comments, or concerns on this introductory? I, I, I don't want to belabor the point, but I'll add another very, very important point. 
because you know economic empowerment is also one of our budget priorities. So um, remember, 25, and I hear you, I hear you Councilman Lupe, but we also have an issue that leads to all the stuff that you just regurgitated. And um, most of us in here, you just preach to the choir. It's not like none of us don't live this stuff. We see it, we know it, we know the people that are actually living with it. Tragedy in New York State, 25 of the poorest zip codes in New York State, five are in Rochester. Mm. And, that, and that is, you know, a, a major, major challenge for us. Um, and, and that affects uh, um, housing and all the stuff that you talk about. So we also have to deal with poverty in Rochester in a major way from a holistic standpoint. Um, that's why I call it economic empowerment, because that's how we move the needle on this. We, we just can't talk about housing in isolation. We got to talk about workforce, education, and all those things, because that's how we start to move this upward mobility for our people. And I think that's been missing from the mi missing from the conversation. But think about that. Rochester's not that big. 25 poor zip codes in New York State. The five poorest are in Rochester, three of them. Um, I'm sorry, four of them are in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, five in Buffalo, and then the rest most, mostly in the Bronx. So that just tells you um, the challenges that, that, that our city has, and that's why we have to go hard and advocate for Rochester, because we know um, what, what, we're, um, what we're dealing with. But that drives a lot of what you were talking about in terms I, of affordability. I totally agree, you know, um, but I guess what I want to underscore is that I think we all understand due to the cost and the way that the developments work, light, the, the federal dollars that exist for Section 8, for LIHTC, for all these things, uh, are just not going to give us the affordability level that we need right now. And I think there's a lot of research around housing first being how people can get a foothold to get out of poverty. And obviously, it's a holistic and everything is connected. Um, but I just, uh, you know, I want to I wanna continue the conversation about how because the private market is not going to meet our needs, what can we do as a city to seek out more funding, uh, whether it's through Honda or other programs, to um, build more affordable housing at that 30 to 50 percent AMI level? Yeah, and if I can just add just sure. one, okay. just one final comment, just for something for us to keep in mind as we move forward, that as we as these developers are coming in and as we are getting more housing, remember we are doing so without any real tenant protections. And so what is that going to mean for the ev eviction rate? And so that is something that I hope that you, Ms. Wheeler, as I see you out there, hello, will take into consideration as you are co-chairing the Housing Quality Task Force. Well, to that comment, um, actually tenants in affordable housing have pretty significant protections. Um, it's the tenants in the private market and as everyone here is aware and without going into all of it, um, the state's been very clear on who has the regula regulatory authority for the private market and it's not the city of Rochester. So seeing no other questions, comments or concerns. I would like to know what city you are referring to but it certainly doesn't exist in Rochester and wait, certainly wait, wait, not wait, in your wait, district, wait, Councilman wait, wait, Patterson. Wait, wait, wait a second, colleague. So it's affordable housing has protections. The private market doesn't. Um, as you're aware, with the legislation that was introduced in other communities, that was. I don't think you need to continue me, that conversation. No, no, no. Tell it. No, no, no. Excuse me, colleague. The number wait a minute. Wait a minute. Colleague, standing in line colleague, wait a minute. Court. Colleague, wait a minute. That is not how we do this. We act. We actually let each other have a conversation. I heard you and I listened to you. I would, I expect the same courtesy. So. Mike Patterson, that, I have me, been. Excuse me, allow me to finish. Thank you. So with that being said, look, good cause eviction is not something that we can legislate at the city level. It's been, y'all tried. We listened to you. We voted it down. The state of New York looked at Albany's legislation, which was exactly what you were looking to pass, and said that it wasn't within the scope of a municipality, but it is within the scope of a state. Certainly. So, excuse me, excuse me. So, I humbly suggest to you that if you want good cause eviction, talk to the state delegation and advocate for it. But to bring it up in this body again and again as though there has been some 
great damage done, we have a duty and a responsibility to work within the scope of the law. And when our, and when our folks tell us, hey, look, what you're looking to do is illegal, then we can't do it and we shouldn't do it. Now, I'm one of the few members of this body who was on this body when other councils routinely passed things that made the community feel good but were then later ruled illegal. As a matter of fact, it was a piece of legislation that we passed last month that met that, that met that same criteria that we had to modify because literally we had a court tell us that we were acting in an unconstitutional manner. So colleagues, what I, I understand your passion and I don't discount it. Okay, but at the same time, we still have to work within the scope of the law. You do get to feel the way you feel. You get to have the feelings you get to have. Nobody's doubting it. Nobody's asking you to feel different. Nobody's asking you to do different. But this is the challenges and the limitations we face. So, mm -hmm. seeing no other, seeing. So I do not get to respond. You you're, want, the, sure, you're the Colleen, chair, and please, you can no, run no, no, your Colleen, committee please, as you choose. Colleen, Am I allowed please to respond, respond to, to you? Yes. So let me say, first of all, yes. that tenant protections mm -hmm. are not restricted to good cause eviction. That is the topic that you choose to hold on okay. to. Okay, so if we really want tenant protections, we can be as innovative and creative as we need to to identify other solutions. And colleague, nobody is trying to. Let me, and, and I, colleague, I am ahead, not please, please finished, Mr. Please Patterson. Continue. Please do. Please do. I'm done. Okay. Well, wait a minute. No, 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 because I'm going to rebut. So the rebuttal to that, dear colleague, is that if you have something, bring it forward and put it on the table. But you haven't. So when you do, we'll look at it and review it again. Work with your colleagues. It's that simple. Yes, Council Member Martin. <laughs> I refute that comment entirely. Citywide Tenant Union, Vocal, and so many other organizations have been creative about what tenant protections look like. They've talked about Honda. They've talked about uh, no CFO, no eviction, which is a piece of the law, of the good cause law, that remained after part of it was struck, uh, striked down. So the whole thing wasn't thrown away. And even though this body chose not to pass good cause, there's still pieces of that legislation that would afford us tenant protections. And I humbly submit my rebuttal to that, dear colleague, is that um, no CFO, no eviction was actually something that you guys, well, not you guys, but some members of the community were going around and telling folks that if a property didn't have a CFO, that you didn't have to pay the rent. And the analysis that our law department did said, yeah, no, that's not exactly true. Now, it hasn't, I don't think it's been litigated, but I, but if, if I've got to look at a point of law and decide who has, is more credible on a point of law, I'm going to defer to Patrick Beath every time because he knows his job, he knows his business, and his analysis tends to hold up in court. So it is nice to, you know, look, if you're going to propose a thing, the only request is that it actually be legal and within the scope of this body to pass. I'm sure you have a rebuttal. Absolutely. So there are many different legal opinions offered by experts in housing that go beyond uh, Kingsley's expertise and Beat's exp expertise. So in writing good cause and in passing other uh, tenant protections, we sought out opinions from a variety of counsel counselors. Um, if you are interested in being creative about tenant protections, I think everyone here acknowledges there's a housing crisis and we're all open to working together. But the notion that because good cause didn't fail, there's no chance to pass other, good cause fails, failed, there's no chance to uh, pass other tenant protections. It's actually, just not true. So no, wait, 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 wait. Let, let, me, let me just, actually colleague, that's not, look, if you're going to propose it, it should be legal. And just because you, and, and I hate to say it like this, but you can find a lawyer to agree with any opinion that you want to put forward. Exactly. So, but I tend to defer to competent counsel whose opinions hold up in court. So, council president just kind of told me to move it along, so now we're going to move it along. Introductory right. 349, need a motion in a second? I'll move it. Moved. Need a second? Second. Moved and seconded, and now we vote. All in favor, introductory 349, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Introductory passes. Introductory 350, resolution endorsing the Monroe County application for Restore New York Communities Initiative Round 6 grant to support the 10th City Revitalization Project. Public hearing to be held at 5 p.m. after the September 15, 
2022 committee's meeting. Questions, comments, or concerns? Quest, quick comment. Tent City's been empty forever. It is just fabulous that we are looking at doing something there, to doing affordable housing and getting that place reactivated and getting those sidewalks moving and people housed. That's my comment. Any other comments? I'm sure there's got to be some. The only thing I'll say is keep your fingers crossed. This is a major priority um, for that neighborhood. It, it could be transformative for the corner of um, dr near driving park and Lau Avenue if we can make this happen. This is just one step, but we got a long way to go in order to put it together. Council Member Pio. Thank you. <laughs> Ditto to what he said. But also, um, should we expect anything coming up for city dollars to go towards this in the future? Yes, we're, okay. we're, we want to um, try to do what we can um, for that as well. Because this is an extremely expensive project. Yeah. I understand that you know, putting together housing in that area is a lot more expensive today than it was 20 years ago, five years ago. So I, I expect that this is going to be a, it starts as a $56 million project. Let's hope it stays less than that. That'd be great. Can I talk about those five four zip codes? It's in, that, it's in that zip code. So I think we have an obligation to try to do what we can to try to rehabilitate and breathe some life back into that area. Appreciate all you're doing. Thank you. Questions? Any other questions, comments, concerns on just, this item? Just going to say echo, and then I'm moving it. <laughs> OK, so move and seconded. And now we vote. All in favor of the introductory, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say nay. Introductory passes. With there being no other business before this committee, we stand adjourned. my turn, Mr. President? How yes, about sir. those bills? Yay. All right, all right. Everybody breathe, breathe, everybody, breathe. Deep breaths. We're talking about parks and public works here. The good stuff, the fun stuff. All right, let's go. At this time, Madam Clerk, I would like to call the Parks and Public Works Committee together. Would you please call the roll? Sure. Council Member Lightfoot? Here. Council Member Gruber? Here. Council Member Pio? Here. Vice President Lupian? Here. President Melendez? Here. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Introductory number 335, amending ordinance number 2019-62 relating to an Empire State Development Grant for the Blue Cross Arena at the War Memorial. Do we have any questions, comments, and or concerns? Just one. Um, I'm still trying to figure out the relationship between us and Blue Cross Arena. So if you could break it down for me pretty easily, do we get a portion of every ticket sale or do we only get a yearly, we're paying rent for this building? I'll have, to, I'll have to get back to you on the specifics of the lease. There is a number of different revenue arrangements that are within there um, and part of it is what comes out of ticket sales. Okay, if, if there's a quick breakdown for every $10 that I spend there, you know, on a ticket, how much goes to us, how much goes to the county, that'd be fantastic. I appreciate it. We, we can absolutely provide that. I just don't want to give any information that's not 100% correct, so we'll go back and look at the lease for you. Thank you. Absolutely, Council Member. I'll, I'll follow back up with you in an hour. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Thank you. I, I'm trying to keep my, my staff's blood pressure down. <laughs> <laughs> any other discussion around this particular introductory? Move it. Second. It's been moved and second. Now we vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Introductory passes. All right. Introductory number 336, authorizing agreement for the Genesee Waterways Center Boathouse. Any questions, comments, and or concerns? Yes. Sorry. Councilman Peel. Um, I know what a boathouse is, but what is this boathouse? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll defer to Commissioner Green as far as what the specific programming of it is. Um, with respect to what this project is, this is the first part of a, a five-phase uh, design development process, if you will, schematic design. So what will be taken into account is looking at it from what the structure is and then beginning to look at what the programming could be. In other words, what uses we want to continue to see in there, maybe what uses we want to add as well as as maybe not do anymore because they're not needed because the boathouse hasn't been renovated in some time. Uh, once we go to the next phase, it'll be design development, and that's when an architect would come in and begin to look at what the specifics are of the design and how they can be handled structurally. So um, not to put my colleague on the spot, but in terms of what happens at the boathouse, it's really a function of program. Uh, before she does that, I just want to make this point, uh, Commissioner Perrin and uh, Commissioner Green, just so people get an idea of what, what this is. My understanding, the bowhouse is next to the swimming pool. That is correct. 
yes. behind the baseball field, Correct. just so people know what we're talking about when yes. we say boat house. That's the, the actual location of it. Uh, along the river there, of course, it's the boat house, um, next to the uh, softball field, correct? That's correct. And my first job was at Genesee Valley Pool in that boathouse. And back in the day, and I think you still can, it was like a, it was called like the canoe, canoe river, the canoe yes. river, if you remember. Yes. Those are, are folk, us folks that are familiar with the West Side, and you could rent canoes. City workers would work there, and you could go out and go on the canoe. Um, but I, I'll leave it to uh, Dr. Green if there's any other things you wanted to add about programming or anything related to the boathouse. But that, that's to renovate that structure, which has been there forever and not been updated in some time. Thank you. So the boathouse is used for several schools who have rowing teams, as well as it's an opportunity for community members to do paddle boating and kayaking as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, I would add that there's nine bays um, for those boats to be stored at for the various things, and then, or for the various elements. And then we also are, there was a 2015 master plan. So what I would say is there's a number of things that were looked at as part of it but it's been since 1996 where all the uses within the building have been you know sort of working within the existing space so it's really time to look at updating that for for more modern uses in particular to reflect the direction that commissioner green is taking the department of recreation and human services so that's why we work very closely on this as noted in the transmittal councilmember gruber and then councilmember harris uh just for clarity we are doing this work, but Genesee Waterways is a separate 501c3 that actually programs the space and, and handles all of the rentals and things of that nature. Is that correct? That's my understanding, yes. Yes, that's correct. And so have they been partners? Have, have their board of directors and everyone been partners in this process? They are partners with us. And are they, are they fundraising for some of this too or is the expectation that all of it is going to come on city city dime i'm not sure of that answer but i'll get that for you okay thank you uh thank you um he answered part of like he asked part of my question but i would like to also add uh, will the schematics that you guys be um drafting will that include storage space for the boats or could you you know elaborate on that Oh, they are both storage bays, up to nine of those. So that's what that's that's what the 2015, 2015 master plan recommended. Um, but again, that's a master plan that's done at sort of this level, and now we're starting to look at, you know, what can actually be housed within the existing structure as we start to look at it. Any additions or revisions that we want to make to it, um, this is now the time. But it, when you're getting into schematic design, you're you're really focusing on what is the structure, and what could it accommodate. And then from there, I think that's a, a conversation that needs to be had with Genesee Waterways and other stakeholders to see what they want to put in there. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry, one more question. Uh, can, can uh, the Northwest District has the longest amount of river frontage of any other district. Can I get a boathouse in my district? That's, you don't have to answer that right now. Okay. <laughs> Duly noted, and we're starting the budget process early this year. So, um, you know, uh, September, October, so we, we, we'll make sure that we add that as one of your priorities. Add it in there. Thank you. No other further discussion for this particular introductory. I'll need a motion. Moved. It. Second. It's been moved and second. Now we vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Introductory passes. Introductory number 337, authorizing funding and amending ordinance 2021-294 relating to the Charles Carroll Plaza and the Genesee Crossroads Parking Garage Roof Slab Reconstruction Project. Any questions, comments, and or concerns? If not, I entertain a motion. I'll move it. Second. It's been moved and second. Now we vote all in favor. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Introductory passes. Uh, we have a couple of uh, introductory that we're, we're not uh, asking for discharging since we're in committee, but we're ask, gonna ask for motions to adopt. Uh, 209 amending the official map by abandoning the uh, uh, elbow pl place right of way. Uh, any questions, comments, or concerns? Did we get a response from the company regarding that right of way? Um, that's actually a separate one for the official map amendment, which was Holly and Gurney Streets. Those okay. are still in, in committee. Uh, no, we haven't. In fact, uh, for council um, for council's information. Uh, one of the reasons that this hasn't moved out of committee is that that one is in relation to a, sp 
building that's being built by a private developer. Uh, the majority of it is in the town of Greece, um, and they're asking us to uh, effectively turn over uh, a, a street to them uh, without any consideration regarding what could go down that tree if they use it as an access point. So to put it very simply, uh, my point has been this. If Greece receives the economic benefit from this, the town of Greece receives the economic benefit, the city's not taking all the trucks, period. I don't care if there's a solar farm and a football field. I really don't care what's across from it. We no longer allow people to dump their, their negativity or their, their negative, I'll call it externals, not negative externalities. There's the economic term I was looking for. We're not going to accept the negative externalities without the economic positivity that comes with with an expanded tax base. So we're still very much working on that, but that's the holdup on that one. This is related to along North Clinton um, and the development that's going there, just making sure that they have site control and access. Yeah, just, just a quick comment um, on 209. So um, to the administration, I'd like to have a work session on the project. It could be part of the MBD quarterly or part of PBW. I'm not sure which, which way we want to do this, but certainly would be helpful for council to be briefed on this project specifically. This is the one at the, at the flambos? Yes. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. It's been moved? Second. It's been moved and second. Now we vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Introductory 209 passes. Introductory number 210, amending the official map by abandoning the Selinger Street right-of-way. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. Second. It's been moved and second. Now we vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Introductory 210 passes. Um, if there is no other business to come before the Parks and Public Works Committee, we stand adjourned. I will now call the Public Safety Committee to order and ask the clerk to call the roll. Sure. Vi um, President Melendez. Here. Vice President Lupian. Here. Councilmember Gruber? Here. Councilmember Harris? Here. Councilmember Lightfoot? Here. Councilmember Martin? Here. Councilmember Patterson? Here. Councilmember Peel? Here. Councilmember Smith? Here. Thank you. Introductory number 338, authorizing agreement for motor vehicle accident records management. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Now we vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Introductory number 339, authorizing the intermunicipal agreement with the Rochester City School District for traffic and crowd control services. Any questions, comments, or concerns? President Melendez would just like to disclose I work for the City School District. Noted. As do I. Noted. Move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. No. Nay. Motion carries. <clears throat> Introductory number 340, authorizing the mandatory agreement relating to fitness for duty clinical services for the Rochester Police Department. Any questions, comments, or concerns? I'll entertain a motion and a second. Uh, I, I do have just a few questions. Um, Councilmember um, Martin. Is this service also afforded to members of the fire department? Yes, this would be HR. So I'm going to defer this to uh, Deputy Chief of Administration, Korea. This is specifically for the Rochester Police Department, our agreement that we have with our psychiatrist. Yeah. But is there something similar in the fire department, just thinking about injury-related uh, work, in, uh, related injuries and services that may be provided to also? Um, uh, Martin, we can get back to you and see what organization um, is filling that same type of role and assimilate to the fire department if they are if not we can make yeah. back. and also uh, other city departments if this service is offered to all city employees yep. just curious about that we, we can have HR follow, by, follow up with that thank you I don't know if Dr. Nick yeah. yeah we'll follow up we'll follow up any additional questions comments or concerns I, I just want to say uh, uh, kudos to Chief and Deputy Chief, and I know uh, Commander LeFave has put a lot of work into the wellness program. It's great to see the numbers rise of people using the service. It's really important. Kudos. Move it. It's Second. been moved. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Introductory number 341, 
authorizing a funding agreement and amending the 2022-23 budget for the 2023 Pedestrian Safety Enforcement and Education Program. Council, or Council Vice President Lupian. Um, so I, when, when these come up, I usually vote no, and the reason is because I, I really believe that enforcement um, isn't as effective as built environment and other kinds of interventions. And I just wanted to take the opportunity that I know there are um, several groups organizing a pedestrian safety forum on October 25th that highlights some areas um, that are doing some really, really innovative things, including Hoboken, New Jersey, who has not have a, had a pedestrian uh, traffic-related death in four years. So um, I think that's 6 p.m. on October 25th, and it'll be a Zoom. Any additional questions or comments? I just want to thank you very much for this. Three of the four streets, again, are in my district. They are a terror to drive down. It is scary every single day driving down these streets. And I love seeing enforcement there, and the, and the community loves seeing enforcement there. You guys are doing a fantastic job. The only request would be if we could move these hours, because they tend to be around that four to six time period when people are getting out of work. If we can push it to the later time, um, it, there tends to be a lot of uh, fast moving traffic at night for some reason. Thank you so much. I'll make a comment while, while they're talking over there. Commissioner Perrin, I appreciate the response about uh, design, but I think there's, there's a lot more to say here. I think um, we don't need to go over it now. I have no problem with accepting $55,000 from the state to increase enforcement, but if we know these four areas are troubled areas in terms of pedestrian and vehicular accidents, then let's just make a plan to, to fix the street design over the next, well, as soon as possible. And I know that's easier said than done, but um, enforcement's not gonna, it's not gonna solve the problem long term. No, I would just add and I would reiterate the council every chance I get that we have multiple tools in the toolbox, we call them the four E's. Engineering is one, the design. We also have education, explaining to people what they should be doing, encouragement, trying to get them to do the right thing through promotional type activities, and then enforcement. And I think enforcement is the one that we wanna use last um, because it often involves a fine and we don't wanna be fining people. Let them keep their money, let them spend it on what they need to be spending it on. Um, so it, it really is something that we look at from that perspective. I would also add that we have an active transportation master plan that's currently under development with completion expected in 2023. And this is exactly what we'll be looking at. And by active transportation, we'll be looking at our most vulnerable users, which are pedestrians, bicyclists, and others who basically aren't sitting in a box made of metal and plastic that every five miles you go up exponentially increases the chance of fatality to a pedestrian. So. Yeah, I just hope Understood. to see. I just hope to see these intersections elevated in the CIP. I understand the master plan may be, may be the first step, but I, I, let's get them done as soon as we can. Yeah, and there's also a pedestrian safety action plan that was conducted, and we we've, we've done some improvements by that with that via the state, and we've looked at other ones, including what we did in front of the international plaza to just go out and say we'll just put the crosswalks in ourselves and put a ramp where we need it. So. Um, understood and there's things that we can do, um, but you're absolutely right. There is a design element that influences how people behave. Um, the saying goes that if you, if you, if you, uh, if you, if you build a roadway um, like a barrel, people drive like bullets. So there's things that we need to do to narrow things and slow it down and put, present visual cues that say don't do that. Thanks. All right, I'll entertain a motion to move it. Move it. Second move. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Nay. Motion carries. Introductory number 342, authorizing an intermunicipal agreement with the County of Monroe for explosive storage. Any questions, comments, or concerns? In the transmittal, you say there are uh, benefits from sharing the storage. Can you just uh, share with, with us what those benefits are? Gee. Absolutely. There is absolutely no cost for this storage. Can you see me? Um, so it saves the Rochester Police Department money. To, to, ho to house these items. Okay, so the cost is, is just the financial, I mean the benefit is just the financial uh, savings? Yes. Okay. Plus also these items aren't stored in the city of Rochester. Okay. That's another benefit. Thank you. Any additional questions, comments, concerns? Move it. It's been moved. Second. Seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. 
Introductory number 352, authorizing an agreement for body-worn cameras and a digital evidence management system for the Rochester Police Department. I just want to um, make a comment here that today I'm going to be holding this item. I fully expect to bring it out of committee and, and vote on it in a full council meeting, but there's some amendment that I would like to consider. Um, and I, I just want to actually turn it to the chief briefly. We've been in conversation on this item. Um, you know, previously we had a community, community justice advisory board looking at the body worn camera program. Um, currently, I know we don't have an MOU. We don't have anything in place for that. Um, could you speak to the future of that briefly, and then and then I may have additional question or two. Sure. So, what the president's referring to is a, a system to track compliance within the department for the body worn camera system. Uh, we previously had a memorandum of agreement with the uh, civilian group the Community Justice Advisory Board. And what we would do is we would meet with them, we would provide them the, the data and discuss compliance versus non-compliance in the department. That uh, agreement has expired. Upon discussions with the administration, uh, the preference would be that the Police Accountability Board would pick up these responsibilities. We did have a meeting with them yesterday, uh, and they are uh, in agreement. So we have uh, future meetings moving forward as to exactly how that will look. As far as the actual software built into the new system for auditing, um, I would have to defer to Nick Petiti for that. Um, the other thing I can say is, uh, again, a reminder that any department discipline is dependent on the collective bargaining agreement of the Rochester Police Locust Club. And there is currently a MOA in enforce in regards to body-worn cameras. And of course, with the new system, we will have to be addressing that uh, with the Locust Club for any modifications that we might need. Thank you for that, Chief. And in addition to that, I just want to note that we're having conversations as well around um, you know, the records management part of it, the evidence management part of it, and making sure that there's some kind of uh, civilian cooperate, you know, committee or involvement in auditing that, and specifically around the privacy issue. So Chief and I have had that conversation as well. Um, and it is my intention to engage my colleagues over the weekend and ahead of the council meeting with a proposed amendment on the subject. Uh, any additional questions, comments, or concerns? Yes, just, go ahead. Thank you. Martin. I just have a few questions. Um, um, relating to just what you're buying and what does, what does it do? Um, I, I'm sure our community will have a lot of questions. Um, I support the use of body-worn camera footage, and in fact, I would like to see it expanded to dash, dash cam, dashboard cameras, something Mike Patterson also supports. Um, so currently, is RPD responsible for monitoring and archiving uh, footage from city, build, city buildings? So I'm going to turn all the technical questions over to uh, the Director of the Office of Business Intelligence, Nick Petiti, who's here with us. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah, we are. Okay. It's, um, it's not necessarily part of this program. Uh, the digital evidence management system is primarily going to support the body-worn camera system. However, it is scalable. So there could be future huh. uh, legislation that would, not legislation, but there could be future uh, budgetary options to expand that program as well. Okay, just for clarity, because in the legislation it seems like all three would be integrated into the new system. It's just the buddy one camera? Certain pieces of the blue light camera system will also stay in the digital evidence management system. Those that are marked for case investigations or things that we have retention policies for will be included in the case management system. But general storage of the overall 24 hour a day, seven day a week um, blue light camera system will not. In it. Thank you. And what brand of camera was used in the pilot pilot program? It seems like there were two different ones tested, and one has a removable battery. Well, there was the contract that we have in the pilot program that we have is with iPro. Mm -hmm. The actual contracts with uh, Insight. Yes. There's iPro is the camera supplier. Um, the one that we have, they all have removable batteries. Okay. They're smart batteries. Uh, when they go in and they get plugged in. The, this has an extended battery life from the current version that we have right now, um, and we will have uh, a very similar to what we have currently, we will have an exchange program so that if there's any kind of malfunction, we can immediately get the officer a new camera. 
Yes, I mean, having to wait. That's exciting because I know there were some issues with uh, battery and battery life with the previous one. So thank you. Um, and in rating the different categories um, to choose which company to use, like we see the different scores, but what criteria did you use to come to those scores? Like how did you know, like what were you looking for and is there a manual you used or was this created um, as you went? Yeah, so it was created from our current program knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. so from the six years of operating the body-worn camera program. It went into six categories, uh, functional capabilities, and I can give you all this. You know, yes, right? I, I read all, uh, all okay. those, yeah. So there, there's 41 individual data point metrics that we looked at during the pilot that fall into those categories. Mm -hmm. um, and I can provide each one of those. Yes, I'm, I'm just curious, and I know some community members are too, so that would be helpful, thank you. And within the pilot phase, like how were these different materials tested? Like what scenarios were they used in? Uh, real live scenarios. So we actually exchanged uh, the current version of the body worn camera for the new version in the pilot, and the officers that were participating in the pilot program used the cameras. Um, we took all the footage and we implemented it into the new proposed uh, digital management system and, and kind of built the cases around there. Yeah. Um, and then we, at the end of the pilot, we took all of the data that is in the test environment, we moved it into our current storage. Mm -hmm. So we didn't lose anything, it's still in C3 Sentinel, so if we decide not to go with this thing, it's not like we don't have access to the video that was captured. Okay, amazing, and what do these cameras do that the other ones don't? I know the resolution was something that was mentioned, yeah. Um, and yeah, so what are the key differences between this? this? So functionally with the cameras, um, it's resolution is a huge one, the extended battery life is another one, um, and quite honestly, we're out of warranty with our existing SOC. Yeah. So having the protection of being able to just turn this thing in when it breaks, if it breaks, um, or if we lose one, because this is subscription-based, we can, we can exchange it. Yeah. Right now, if we break a camera or it gets knocked off or somehow it gets lost or it doesn't function anymore, we're out of camera. Yeah, that makes sense. It sounds like a good system. Um, and just a few more questions. Sorry sure. to have so many. And with the DEMS software within the system, what are the capabilities that this one has that the old system doesn't? Yeah, I think the easiest way to think about this compared to the old one, the old system is essentially just a file cabinet. Mm -hmm. It's where we keep all the videos. The new DEM system is actually a case management system. Mm -hmm. So we have the ability to put multiple digital evidence in the same case and manage like an investigative case. Nothing has to leave the records man or the uh, sorry, the digital evidence management system ever. So when we fulfill FOILs, we don't actually extract video, save it somewhere and send it out. And we send you guys video that you request, mm -hmm. never leaves the system. Okay. So we have the ability to partition off pieces of it under an individual case. We'll send you a link or send the FOILer a link. They will then come into the system. So everything that happens with our body-worn camera video will be audited. Okay, amazing. Which is big for storage costs and for accountability. Yeah, thank you. Um, and do the cameras record straight to the cloud server, or does someone have to upload them from, and I'm not techn yeah. a techno, yeah. So. so the camera gets recorded, mm -hmm. uh, the, the video gets recorded on the camera, the officer has to tag the video by the associated categories, and then when they dock the uh, camera in the docking bay, it will upload as it charges. Okay. So at the end of their shift, they'll dock it, when their next shift comes up, they'll pick it up, okay. and everything will be uploaded. So it has to be in the charging dock to upload. It's not. Correct. Yep. Okay. So, cool. Cool. And while the data is being transferred from the current system to the DEMS um, system or DEMS, will it be accessible to other agencies? I'm thinking about the cases PAB is currently looking into and the files they've requested. Would, would that impact? That? Uh, no, it shouldn't impact any of it. Um, as part of the agreement here, the uh, the contract will include migration of, it's roughly like 480 terabytes of information wow. from our current system into the new system. Depending on when the request comes in, if it hasn't been migrated yet, we'll pull it out of C3. If it has, we'll pull it out of the new DEM system. Very cool. And we lose nothing in this scenario. We keep all the data that we currently have. 
Cool. And the last question, since it's on a cloud, and if I'm understanding, like if we want to watch a video or if PAB wants to watch a video, you simply send a link? Mm -hmm. Would that link be downloadable, not for council members, but for investigations the PAB may be conducting? So the downloadable to take out of the system? Like to store on a computer to have it to analyze, or will they consistently? Thank you, so, Council Member Payo. Those are policy-based decisions. Um, uh, my suggestion, and it would be a very hard suggestion if possible, is never should a video leave the system. Okay. I mean, you have the ability to act, not you, but the, yeah. well, you will, but the, in that scenario, the PAB would have the ability to actually go into the system and watch the video. One of the things we want to mitigate here is that we have duplicate copies of the same video on city networks. Mm. Because right now we have duplicate, triplicate, six times over the same video being stored in a bunch of different folders on a bunch of different drives for a bunch of different reasons. Okay. Part of that is problematic. Vice okay. President Lupia. Yeah, just a quick question. With the current system, when it starts recording, the first 30 seconds are, the, there's no audio. Will that continue or will that be fixed with the system? No, that continues. That's, that's the way it that's works. When they turn the camera on, it has the ability because it's, it's constantly catching the video, but the audio wouldn't be on. Okay, thank you. Great. I'll entertain a motion on this. Just Actually, a, sorry, it, we're going to hold this. It's not a question, sorry. it's just a comment. We, yes. we, have, um, we have a lot of contracts with a lot of IT, with a lot of tech and software across the city. We find ourselves constantly going back for more and more new contracts with whomever we bought the technology from. I'm just hoping that embedded in this significant amount of money is some ongoing technical assistance. Yeah, it is. So the way that we have the contract structured, at least in the proposal, is as a subscription. So essentially, we don't own any of the actual hardware. And from a software standpoint, we are um, using that. We're, we're getting it as a software as a service. So included in that service is maintenance, technical assistance. Um, it's the ability for administrative changes when it comes down to uh, rights inside of the computer or inside of the system. Perfect. So Thanks, yeah, Nick. it's covered. Thank you. All right, thank you. So we're holding 352 and we're holding 352A. So I'll move us along to introductory number 354, authorizing an agreement and amending the 2022-23 budget relating to Pathways to Peace. Any questions, comments, concerns? Moved. Hearing none, moved, seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Introductory number 357, authorizing the receipt and use of US, United States Department of Justice funds to equip the Greater Rochester Area Narcotics Enforcement Team. Uh, Chief Smith, I know, I know that we had some conversations, just, just really came as a statement of necessity late, so I want to give you the floor just to maybe highlight what this is and the importance of it. Sure, so I apologize for the lateness. We were waiting on the uh, Department of Justice to actually give us the go-ahead as soon as we got it. Then we uh, submitted the request. Um, it is time limited. So we only have until September 30th to show that the funds are encumbered. Um, if that doesn't happen, then we simply lose them. They are for equipment and software purchases, so there's no overtime involved in this, no fringe costs. Um, and as far as the actual equipment purchases, I'm not really a subject matter expert, but if any members of council have questions about the equipment, I do have someone here who can answer those. Chief, I would ask if you could submit that to us in, in writing just so we know what it is. Uh, save us some time today, if that's okay. Certainly. Great. Any questions, comments, concerns? Is there a written policy around when this uh, system would be used to break into cell phones? Yes, there is. And, of course, it is all dependent on a search warrant for a judge. Okay. Um, we're never allowed to do that without uh, a search warrant. Awesome. Could you please send... Uh, us that policy absolutely thank you sir any additional questions comments concerns i entertain yes. a motion hold on i'm sorry councilman i mean to tell you to hold on sorry that's all right is there a way you could bring this equipment in so we can check it out <laughs> no because we haven't purchased <laughs> dang it. it all right i'll entertain a motion move it second. it's been moved and seconded all in favor please say aye aye, aye. all opposed say nay nay Motion carries. With no further business before the Public Mr. Safety President, Committee. Mr. Uh, yes. Yeah, I just want to uh, have a couple of statements or con 
um, request, if you will, and, and a couple of questions since we're under public safety, uh, kind of taking us a little bit back to the mayor and uh, the housing conversation uh, that we were having before, talking about workforce, education, poverty, and economic empowerment. Now, here we have an opportunity in our last, we just approved uh, to have the, our fire test that we have coming up. We talk about economic empowerment. That's economic empowerment, uh, giving our uh, residents an opportunity to um, um, become uh, City of Rochester firefighters. And th that opportunity doesn't come around too often. It doesn't come around often enough. And here we have, um, it's my understanding from what I read, that the, um, the application process has started. I reviewed the application process, and I, and I had a couple of questions uh, and, and a few uh, concerns uh, with the application that came out. Um, it said in the application that, in the notice, that the, there was a review com or committee that was reviewing uh, consultants that were going to get the information um, to be able to utilize for, I assume, for study materials for the fire exam. Now, uh, in the past, it is my understanding that all of the fire exams that have been given in the past have had study materials. You get them when you sign up for the e exam. And so I'm hoping that what, what are we doing to make sure that we're assuring our city residents are going to be as successful as possible when, when taking this exam? Are we taking that under consideration that potentially they may not get this study material until very close to the actual exam? Are we looking at maybe pushing the exam back? Or what, what are we going to do to make sure that our folks are, are going to be as successful as they possibly can be? Chief, Chief and uh, Rose, uh, Dr. Nichols. So um, I'll try and take one piece at a time. So uh, we do, this is the exam this time was asked to be changed by the fire leadership to a firefighter slash EMT exam. On the last time, my understanding that it was offered, it was just firefighters, so we need to do a job analysis workshop, which will be held next Monday and Tuesday. There are 12 um, people from the fire department that will be involved with that job analysis workshop with the vendor that we, um, that you all voted to give the contract to last month. There's nine firefighters and three supervisors. Once they uh, seek the advice or the input from those 12 individuals, um, the vendor will put together um, a document that will give them information that will be used to put together the study guides, um, which will be placed on the websites they have assured us by October 7th, and that will be six weeks worth of time for them to have the study materials. There are a number of other initiatives, training, videos, um, and workshops being given not only by the fire department but by the vendor in those six to eight weeks. I do have a timeline that I'd be more than happy to share with you that we shared with the fire department yesterday, and they were totally on board with it. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure that we are included, the council that is, um, we are, we represent a lot of constituents, of course, and we want to be uh, allies in uh, making sure that the test is successful as it possibly can be. And, and th these are just um, uh, points that I'm not looking for answers for these now. I think the chief is here, but I, I, I'm to, for the record, uh, I do want to get these polls, these particular uh, request. Now, I would like to get a um, request of the Rochester Fire Department rules and regulations. I want to get that and get that sent over to our uh, chief of staff since everyone's on public safety so they can be disseminated to all of the council members. Uh, I'd like a copy of the current bargaining agreement with Local 1071 uh, as well. Um, we, I, we, I think that those documents uh, should be understood by all of the council members that are here that are represented. Uh, I want to make sure that that information uh, is available, uh, and I want to see the RFD disciplinary processes and guidelines for disciplinary pro uh, procedures. And, and all the three of those documents, please uh, get them to uh, our chief of staff to be disseminated to all of our council members, please. Acknowledged. Thank you. Um, if I could interject, um, Mr. Chairman. 
we do have a work session coming up with the administration in October related to recruitment within the fire department and the police department, which should be helpful for the concerns and questions that you have as well. I, I, thank you. I agree. I, but I would do. I would hope that we would get the documents before the work session, please. I think that would be even more helpful if they're uh, acclimated to the information. Absolutely. Thank you for that. All right. With no further business before the Public Safety Committee, we stand adjourned. At this time, I'd like to call the Recreation and Human Service Committee to order, and I ask the clerk to call the roll. Sure. Councilmember Harris? Here. Councilmember Lightfoot? Here. Councilmember Martin? Here. Vice President Lupian? Here. President Melendez? Here. Thank you. Introductory number 343, authorizing the agreement and amending the 2022-23 budget relating to the drum court Association World Championship. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. Second. Need second. Second. All. All in favor, say aye. 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 All in favor. All opposed, say nay. The motion carries. Introductory number three forty-four, authorizing the agreement for athletic skills development and academic support services. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Need a second or motion in the second. Move it. Second. Now we vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Say nay. Motion carries. Introductory number 345, authorizing agreement for veterinary services. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. Need a motion and second? Second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Say nay. Motion carries. Introductory number 346, authorizing an intermissible agreement relating to the Flower City Public Health Corps program. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Move it. Need a motion second? Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor, we say aye. 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 Any opposed, say nay. Motion carries. Introductory number 347, authorizing an agreement relating to emergency response outreach mobile unit. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Comment. I just want to commend the uh, administration on this. I think this is an excellent idea. I know that Council Member Harris, you also worked on this idea. and. I, I think that there's great opportunity to collaborate with other mobile outreach units, including some of the conversations we had earlier around the homeless population and others. So looking forward to seeing this move forward, and um, thank you for your work on this. I'd like to add a comment as well. Thank you very much, uh, President Melendez, uh, Dr. Green, her team, and as well as the mayor. Uh, you know, we just thought it was important to make this a multi-purpose unit so other departments can use it. Um, of course, it would be used for emergency response um, for, you know, all the needs that, that was initially uh, put out for. But I think that if we can consider other departments and have other departments utilize the services, it will be great um, for all. Thank you. And I want to thank you, Councilmember Harris, for working with this on the administration. I think it's a um, great example of uh, how to collaborate um, with the administration and council. So thank you. Thank you. So we were at a motion and a second. I'll move it. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion carries. And with no further business, the Recreation and Human Service Committee stands adjourned. Okay. okay. The meeting will come to order for the and the clerk will, oh wait, for the public hearing, the clerk will call the roll. I'm so, can we take a minute, couple minute break? <laughs> Just use the bathroom? All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so, we do have a meeting in here. <laughs> I just wanna go home. <laughs> uh, we do have a meeting in here that wanted to start at six. Well, they're just gonna have to wait. They're just gonna have to wait. Clerk Washington, did you say there's another meeting at six? Yes, okay. the zoning board was trying to use right. this room at 6. We'll start at 6 o'clock. Did you see my text? Did you see my text? Oh, there's no proof legislation? Damn. Really? 
you should really. I did. Wait, but. Question mark. Do you think it's possible that he may just not do it? It's possible. Anything's possible. Did, I didn't, also, I didn't know whether to talk about privacy or not. I thought he spoke, he spoke about it first. I was like, okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I was like, okay, I guess maybe he I said it. I was curious about the whole body cam system. It's interesting. I'm going to support it. But. Yeah, he is. I have no issues with him. Yeah. 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 But he's. Yeah, yeah. I like him. I know, I know. Chief Smith seemed salty with me. But Chief Smith, Smith seemed like he didn't want to talk to me, which I get. Is that deep? People care about that? Oh, I didn't think people cared about that because they get it anyway. I really didn't. It's symbolic. I have no power. James, you gotta teach me the the playbook. Is that? That's why homegirl. Okay, that makes sense.
please take your seats. We will begin the public hearing. Thank you. This meeting will come to order and the clerk will call the roll. Council Member Gruber? Council Member Harris? Here. Council Member Lightfoot? Council Member Martin? Here. Council Member Patterson? Here. Council Member Pio? Here. Council Member Smith? Here. Vice President Lupian? Here. President Melendez? Thank you. Uh, just a just a note if you are here for the zoning board meeting it will start immediately after the public hearings thank you all for joining us for tonight's public hearings these hearings will be broadcast live on our city council YouTube channel as well as city channel 12 pursuant to law public hearing will now be had on the following matter amending the official map by abandoning the Gurney Street right-of-way introductory number 263 any persons desiring to speak in reference to said matter will now be heard. If there are no comments, that hearing is adjourned. Closed. Thanks. Pursuant to law, public hearing will now be had on the following matter. Amending the official map by abandoning the Holly Avenue right of way. Introductory number 264. Any persons desiring to speak in reference to said matter will now be heard. If there are no hearings, this hearing is closed. If there are no speakers, this hearing is closed. Pursuant to law, public hearing will now be had on the following matter. Amending the zoning code and the business permits code to allow and regulate adult use dispensaries and adult use con consumption lounges in some zoning districts in accordance with the state cannabis law. Introductory number 322, any persons desiring to speak in reference to said matter will now be heard. If there are no speakers on this item, this hearing is closed. Pursuant to law, public hearing will now be had on the following matter, authorizing the application and grant agreement for Restore New York Communities Initiative Round six, introductory number 349, any persons desiring to speak in reference to said matter will now be heard. If there are no speakers on this item, this hearing is closed. Pursuant to law, public hearing will now be had on the following matter. Resolution endorsing Monroe County application for Restore New York Communities Initiative Round six grant to support the Tent City Revitalization Project. Introductory number 350, any persons desiring to speak in reference to said matter will now be heard. If there are no speakers on this item, the hearing is closed. This concludes our public hearings tonight. The legislation for these hearings will be voted on at our City Council meeting on Tuesday, September 20th at 7.30 p.m. in City Council Chambers. The meeting will also be live streamed on our YouTube channel as well as on City Channel 12. Thanks.